Well, it's my pleasure to introduce our third speaker for today. Shane Gibson is an internationally recognized speaker, trainer, and entrepreneur who has addressed several thousand people over the past decade in Canada, the U.S., and South Africa. He combines a diverse background in sales force leadership, new entrepreneur development, and extensive sales and leadership coaching. Shane is Executive Vice President of KBI and heads the firm's North American operations. He has been published in numerous publications on topics of leadership, marketing, sales, strategic communications, and assessing business opportunities. He has also addressed the topic of entrepreneurial leadership in magazine, radio, and television interviews, including the Financial Post and Profit Magazine. Most recently, Shane spoke at the World Summit for Youth Entrepreneurs, put on by the United Nations Development Program, addressing over 1,500 young entrepreneurs from 72 countries. Please welcome Shane Gibson. Thank you. So we've got 30 brief moments to spend together for me to discuss a topic that I'm very passionate about. So I've put a full three-hour program in half an hour, and I'm just going to speak six times faster. So get your notes out. <laughs> All seriousness. Goal setting and really what the power of a goal is, is in my opinion, a goal defines a leader. And a goal shapes a leader. And for us to have power for goals to move towards and a process to get there is really, we, and Darcy talked about the journey, is that I, a number of years ago I ran a youth entrepreneur program and we graduated over 180 youth entrepreneurs, 19 to 29 year, years old in Burnaby. And we had a 55% startup rate. And what was interesting is, is as I watched these enterprises develop, and as I've been in connection now with these people for seven, eight years, the reality is, is that they didn't really grow a business. The business grew them. And really, entrepreneurism and even career development is a process not where we get to learn more about business, but more so we get to learn more about ourself. And having powerful, powerful goals and really sticking our neck out a bit and having the courage to take action towards them can really help us to begin to develop ourselves. So, oops, that is a sticky trigger there. I'd like to start off with a quote from an author that I like a lot. Anybody read any of Zig Ziglar's material? So Zig Ziglar is kind of the, in my opinion, sort of the grandfather of motivational uh, speaking and training, and he's done you know, thousands of talks all around the world. But one of my favorite quotes from him goes like this. You have to be before you can do. And you have to do before you can have. What does that mean to you? Anybody, what does that mean to you? You got to get up and start moving. Absolutely, you got to take action. Anybody else? Proactive. 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 Absolutely. Proactive. Absolutely. Realize that you're going to be as you're going to be, and another as you want to be. And so, as we look at it, what he's saying here is you have to be that person already. In other words, part of it is becoming inside that person that's going to achieve those goals. So truly owning and believing in our own abilities to do things much greater than we even know we're capable of. Then, and we know, who knows about some really motivated people, or at least they're very positive, but they're positively sitting home on the couch a lot. Anybody meet these people, right? <laughs> like, I'm a positive thinker. I watch The Secret, and I'm visualizing success. Uh, but first, you've got to answer your phone when those clients call you, right? So there's a component of it. Yes, I believe in myself. Yes, I'm positive. Yes, I'm visualizing where I'm going. But then, hey, I'm going to take action. And then once I take that action, then I'm going to get to those goals. So today, we're going to talk a little bit about that. Now, as I said, this topic is something that we can spend a lifetime honing. And so I'm just going to take sort of the top off it. And I'm going to focus on six areas. One is clarity. To create and achieve powerful goals, we need true clarity. Second is focus, an ability to consistently stay focused. And I like what Darcy said earlier, not tunnel vision, but focus. But focused on the goal. A strong personal self-esteem and belief in oneself is absolutely critical to moving towards our goal. Strong follow-through on those goals. A commitment. Hey, I got commitment there twice. I guess I really wanted you guys to focus on this today. But uh, an absolute commitment towards those goals as well. So let's start off talking about clarity. This is a quote from a mentor of mine. His name is Fred Shadian. And Fred got 
the North American record in our niece, which is the Filipino stick fighting and knife fighting. It's a martial arts discipline. He didn't mail away for this black belt, but he actually got it in a year. Uh, and how he did it was absolute focus and really clear in what he wanted. But one of the things I asked him is, you know, how did you really attract all the mentors and the people that helped you to get there? And he said, Shane, part of it is that when mission is clear, abundance will appear. When we're not sure about what we want and we're not clear on where we're going, who's felt that way? You're in a bit of flux and you're kind of floating and it's just like there is no evidence of success around us, is there? <laughs> right? Because we don't know what it looks like. We don't know if we're going this way or that way. Am I successful? Am I going the right direction? Am I making the right moves? Have I chosen the right courses? Where am I going? But all of a sudden we had absolute clarity about where we want to go, strange things happened. We're out an event and we're networking. And all of a sudden, we meet someone. Hi, Pat. Hello. How are you today? Very good. Thanks. And we start chatting, and all of a sudden, we're talking away, and it all of a sudden becomes very clear, because I know where I'm going, that Pat has an opportunity in an organization that aligns with my career goals. Yet if I wasn't totally sure about where I was going in my career, we would have had a nice conversation. But I wouldn't have looked like something that could help me get to my goal. Does that make sense? And so as we're absolutely clear in our goals, we begin to identify assets, people, networks, organizations, tools, and knowledge we need to acquire. So the first part is being absolutely clear about where we want to go. So here's sort of a quick formula around goals. Number one, we want them to be smart. What does smart stand for? Specific, measurable, attainable, or achievable, realistic, and timely, right? So absolutely specific. It's interesting because when we ask for something and be very specific about it, things happen. So, for instance, if I said, gee, you know, after the break, I'd like a coffee. So someone ran and they grabbed me a coffee. And I get it, and it's lukewarm, and it's got cream clumps floating in it, you know, that, those sort of uh, powdered cream. Uh, and it's loaded with sugar, and it tastes like it's been boiling for like eight hours, and it's like burning its way down the back of my throat. Uh, you know, but do I have anything to complain about? No, right? Yet if I said, you know what I'd love after this break? I'd like a grande, long Americano with non-fat milk, two sugar on it. Now, number one, I've, 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 I've determined what that goal is, but now, is there a likely chance I'm going to get that more so now that I'm clear on it? But I also realize there's some, some assets I need. For instance, I need someone to go for me because <laughs> I'm not going to be able to go. So if I bought you, say, a coffee, would you mind running down and grabbing it for us? And maybe an extra five bucks for your trouble, right? Does that make sense now? So part of it is we had determined where our goal, what our goal is. We're absolutely clear on it. We communicate it to other people. And then we also realize what assets we need to get there. So our goals need to be absolutely smart. Part of this is in a leadership position, too. I remember having a woman come to one of my courses uh, that we do in partnership at Langara College on customer service at that time. And she came, and I said, okay, so what do you want to get out of this program? She goes, well, I need to get better at customer service. I said, okay, that's fair. She says, yeah, my boss sent me. He says I'm horrible. <laughs> okay. I said, well, I'm glad you're so honest in front of this room of people. Uh, and I said, so, you know, what kind of feedback? Where are you bad? She goes, oh, I don't know. He just said I'm bad, and he sent me here. What's the likelihood of her taking away what she needs to be successful from that class? Pretty low, right? His goal for her wasn't smart. He wasn't specific on how she's going to improve and develop herself. So we need very smart goals. Also, they need to be aligned with our values. Our own personal definition of success is one of the most critical things. Is that too often I bump into people and they're 22 or they're 32 or they're 52, and they've been following a path and a series of goals which are really in line with somebody else's values. They borrowed the goals from society. They borrowed them from a well-meaning professor. They borrowed them from a mentor. Or they just kind of followed the pack. And they're absolutely uninspired of what they're doing. And they're wondering why they just can't put that extra effort to go where they want to go. And I think one of the key factors is as we build our goals for our career and our business and even our short-term goals is to get really, really honest about what's important to us. What are our core values? And then based upon that, we begin to set those goals. Sometimes our goals won't change, but how we get there will. One of my top goals or sort of values is flexibility and intimacy. Right? Spirituality, it's sort of my top three. As I look at this, you know, I may, go to the, I may end up having that same two, three million dollar house on the hill, but I'll have had a very different path to get there in my career to my neighbor. 
right? So as we look at it, get really clear on our values. Actually, it's an interesting thing too, is I, I was uh, actually talking to a young entrepreneur and uh, they're in the industry, speaking industry as well. And they sat down and said, Shane, what does it take to be successful in the industry? And this just came out. It was almost like it just, I didn't even really think about it. I said, the ability to say no. And they went, okay, that's profound. And I go, yeah, it was. <laughs> Where'd that come from? Was that me? Uh, and I said, yeah. And I thought, okay, what did I mean? And I go, oh yeah, okay. So here it goes. What it is, we're absolutely, sometimes in life, a lot of where we get pulled off track in our goals is distraction, isn't it? I have a certain career path, but someone waves an extra couple dollars and I'm over here for a little while. And then I've got a little bit of insecurity and someone says something else and maybe I should do that because I'm not sure. And next thing you know, we spend a whole bunch of time on things that don't produce or move us to where we want to go or help us evolve as leaders. And so when we're absolutely clear on what's important to us as far as values go, it gets very, very easy to say no and very, very easy to say yes to where we want to go, who we're going to associate with on a regular basis, how we're going to grow our business or our life. And lastly, as I steal this from my co-author, Trevor Green, uh, Captain Trevor Green is in the Canadian military, and I think I would have never gotten the book written if it wasn't for him. Uh, it would have been 300 pages, number one, instead of 120. Uh, so Trevor's also a financial journalist and a real crime reporter. And so he helped me whittle that down real quick. And he made sure on a daily basis he put me tasks to get there. But one of the things he did is he says, okay, when do we want to produce this book? So we kind of picked a date. So how many do we want to sell? Let's we'll sell this many. Okay, so great. And then he started doing battle procedures. So we put a goal out 18 months. And he says, okay, to get to 18 months, where do we have to be in 12 months? And we wrote down everywhere we had to be, all the people we'd have to know, all the things we have to do. Now, where do we want to be in nine months in order to get to that 12-month goal? And we drilled it right down to six and three. And then all of a sudden, him and I looked at each other and realized, we're not going out for a pint after work today. Because <laughs> you know what? It's 18 months out and we're already behind schedule. And what it did is it put meaning into every little meeting we had around developing that book. And every bit of research we did and every step we took, even the most menial tasks, when you connect them to your purpose and your goal, become inspiring. And that's one of the things I learned was that to set those goals, anybody take a project management course? Right? So you know what I'm talking about. Half of you are going, yep, that makes sense, right? Uh, I didn't take one. <laughs> so this was new to me. Uh, and so really think about starting where you want to go and working your way backwards as a process to create a sense of urgency in where you want to go. Focus. Whatever you focus on, you empower. I learned this one from uh, my mentor, again, Fred Shadian. And I'll give you sort of the Coles Notes version because of our, uh, our time constraint here today. But I met him in a kind of interesting situation where we were going to do a trade, a ticket trade. He had a peak performance seminar and I had a marketing seminar I was marketing at that time. And he said, Shane, you know, I want to go to your seminar. How about you trade me your ticket for, you know, one of ours? And that's a great idea because I'd like to learn more about peak performance and he needed more on selling. And so I trade the ticket off. And then as I read the fine print on the ticket, it says, at the end of this seminar, you will walk on a 1,200 degree bed of hot coals. <laughs> and I went, Fred, come here, give my ticket back, right? Uh, I'm not into this, right? And he goes, no, no, no. He goes, I'll tell you what. He goes, you don't have to be into this right away. He says, but we've got a demo upstairs. And we were in a, actually at a trade show. And I've got some people up there, and we're going to do a board-breaking demonstration. I said, okay, great, that sounds fantastic. And I was expecting to go upstairs and see a bunch of these sort of young, in good shape, martial artists in their geese, you know, ready to crack some boards for us. So I kind of wandered up with a couple other people, you know, dressed in, you know, my suit and whatnot, and there was a bunch of us sort of wandering around looking lost. And there was Fred and two of his students with a pile of boards in front of them. And he said, welcome. I want to start off talking about possibility thinking and about really looking at how long it takes to achieve a major goal. All right, we said, okay, great. He says, so let me ask you a question. These are tournament size, one inch thick, 12 inch tall, 10 inch wide pieces of pine. How long would it take you to learn how to break one of these in half with your bare hand? And one guy said, oh, that's simple. He says, a friend of mine, she's a green belt. She's been, you know, in martial arts now for just a few months, and she broke a board when she got her belt. So I'm saying six, eight months. He goes, great. He goes, you, sir, how long? And the guy goes, well, he goes, you know, 
I'm one of these guys that is a real do-it-yourself kind of guy. He said, so just give me the board, I'll take it home, and I'll beat on it until it breaks, and I'll tell you how long it takes. <laughs> so he said, okay, well, that's another, that's a good theory. Uh, sure, okay. And of course, now me being a little bit of a smart aleck, and this gentleman beside me uh, and this other woman were kind of all standing here with their arms crossed, you know, going, okay, what's next? Uh, and as a joke, we kind of went, I don't know, five minutes? And he said, fantastic, my volunteers, come on up. <laughs> and we thought, oh, man, what are we doing here? And he so anyway, so... The first guy was this, that, that was with me was this like, linebacker. Like, you couldn't even see Fred and the other student when he stood in, in the lineup. So, of course, I thought, you know, go ahead. You know, go ahead. And, so, and then there was a woman there, and she was about 98 pounds and 5 foot tall. And I said, ladies first. Uh, and so I stood at the back of the line. And so then what occurs is that uh, he lines up, and Fred goes through the whole thing. Okay, breathe. Focus on what you want, not on what's holding you back. So focus beyond the board using the connection to your body. So basically, lots of energy, lots of focus, and the right coach, and I can get you through this board. Pretty simple. The guy, yes, I can do this, absolutely. Then at the last minute, he planted both feet like this instead, pulled back his arm and screamed, ah, and all you heard was like that. <laughs> and then you heard another sound. It was like a wheezing coming from his voice, and he's like, oh, and, he's, and his face is already going red, and his hands, up. And, I'm, and this woman looks back at me like this, and I'm going, Right? <laughs> you do it, right? And so Fred goes, um, he goes, let me ask you a question. And she goes, yes. He goes, would you like to use his strategy or mine? She goes, I think I'll follow yours. So they backed up, and he says, just breathe, focus on what you want and where you want to be, trust in your coach. And she just went, she didn't even like yell or nothing. She just went, pop, and this thing broke in half. And I'm thinking, wow, now I'm under a dilemma, aren't I? There's this massive gentleman who seemed to have more assets and more confidence than me. Huge. He failed because he focused on the wrong thing, right? He empowered the board. Then there's this rather petite, seemingly less strong woman, which obviously was a total misnomer, uh, who utilized her assets effectively and focused in the right direction and plowed through it like it wasn't there. So I decided to follow her strategy as well. And I went through the process, and I flew through the board as well. My hand stung a bit. Hers apparently didn't, but it was stinging a bit when I went through. And b busted this board in half. Totally shocked. And now, it wasn't just a testosterone-filled event of crushing a board in my hand, but that was kind of fun. <laughs> the analogy that stuck with me for a very long time is that we, we really empower what we focus on. That individual saw an obstacle between him and a goal, and he focused all of his energy on that obstacle, and he empowered it. She focused on what she wanted with less effort and got to where she wanted to go. And so in our life, the question is, how many boards are we focusing on? Right? How many challenges or obstacles are we spending all of our time energizing versus focusing on where we want to be? Often when we solve a problem, the problem goes away. We don't necessarily move forward. When we look at creating solutions and outcomes and being very goal-oriented, we almost always move forward with those actions. And a big part of it is you have to believe it to see it. Working with entrepreneurs a number of years ago, one of the things that I found was that I found entrepreneurs were a, a lot more like artists than they were business owners. Artists, what do they do? They've mastered the art and science of creating something from nothing. They have a picture in their head, and they manifest it, right? That's what entrepreneurs do. That's what people who plan their life do, is that they have a picture about where they want to go, and they see it before they get there. And that's a big part of it, is focusing on that picture. So focus. Define what we want with smart goals. On a regular basis, visualize where we want to go. Now, who's heard a lot about visualization lately? Right? Okay. Who feels it might be a little hokey? No one's looking at you. You put your hand and go, I'm not sure about this stuff. I look at some of the highest paid performers in the world, you know, athletes, Olympic athletes even. What do you see a gold medalist skier doing before they go down the hill? Right? They're visualizing. They're in it. Do you think they, if, if they're all doing that, have done it for years, do you think there's maybe a reason why they do it? Part of it is they're visually actually sort of projecting and visualizing where they're going to be, the whole thing. So they own winning before they even get there. And so part of having goals is when we write words down, our mind works better in pictures. So once I've written a goal down, one of the things I'm going to do is, who's got a dream board here or something like that? 
Anybody know what a dream board is? Yeah. It's a series of pictures about where I want to go, goals, dates, people I want to hang out with and meet, car you want to own, an organization you want to contribute to. And literally, versus just writing the goal down with a date, is on a daily basis, when I get up and sit in my office, my dream board's in front of me. And as I achieve the stuff, it comes off the board. And just by creating that picture, our mind works better in pictures. And so from a goal-setting perspective, yes, it's important to write down the date and the word, but really visualize being there and own the goal. And then prioritizing. And that's part of it is when we're absolutely clear where we want to go. And I stole this from, where did I steal this from? Who said this? I'm trying to remember now. I listen to about 30 podcasts on a regular basis. And uh, who, who wrote The Monk who, who Sold His Ferrari Again? Pardon? Robin Sharma, yes. So he said a great thing, and I love that. It. It's a great book to read, but this is off his podcast, which is free. As he says, awareness, which is total clarity about what you want, creates a focus. And awareness and focus help us make right decisions, which in our life give us better results. Very simple. So real awareness of where we want to go and a focus on that helps us make those decisions better and quicker. Here's a quote from Oprah Winfrey. She said, be thankful for what you have, you'll end up having more. If you concentrate on what you don't have, you'll never, ever have enough. I think about our gentleman who smacked the board with his hand. <laughs> he was kind of focused on what he didn't have. He was focused on the obstacle. And so a big part of it is looking at where we want to go. So another part of it, though, is esteem, is believing in our ability to get there. One of the things we found is when we first ran the Youth Entrepreneur Program in Burnaby, which is 19 to 29 year olds for 16 weeks, is we started off focusing on business plan writing and break even analysis and setting the goals for their business. And then at the end of the 16 weeks, they were kind of like their heels were going like this and we're trying to push them out the door and they didn't want to go. And, you know, and they weren't ready to start yet. They're almost ready. And it was a terrifying experience. And what we realized is that these people had all the technical cap capabilities, all the business knowledge, but they didn't believe they could succeed. So we kind of flipped the program around and we spent the first two out of 12 weeks on nothing but personal development, leadership, and self-esteem building exercises. And what we found was that, to be honest, we got a little light on the theory. <laughs> uh, and we spent, instead of spending 30 hours a week in the classroom, we spent 15 and the rest of it was directed with coaches and them learning on their own. And we went from like a 20% startup rate to a 55. And so for us to actually set powerful goals, I believe we have to feel powerful first. So here's some thoughts around that. Is you already are. Think about this. Think about something that you achieved significantly this year that if you told yourself five years ago you were going to do, you wouldn't have believed it. Can anybody think of any of those? Right? But you're the same person, aren't you? I mean, you didn't like grow a new arm. Right? You're the same person that did it. Five years from now, you're going to be that same person. Does that make sense? You're already capable. Part of it is we have to step into our own greatness and give ourselves permission to succeed. And that's really what it's about, is we're absolutely capable. And I can guarantee whatever challenge we come across, there's someone out there who's overcome it with less assets than us. And so, you know, as I look at and someone says can't to me, I often think, you know what, in most cases it's not really can't, it's won't. Like, oh, I can't make my bill payments this month. You mean won't? If it was life or death, you'd find the money. Yes. <laughs> I said, okay, so it's a matter of won't, right? They really don't have a strong enough goal to move towards it. You attract what you are. Jim Jantz, who's a mentor of mine and a good friend, one of the things Jim said to me one day is I was working with him a number of years ago in the direct sales ind industry. And I came and I was upset. I had this group of like 80 people I'd recruited to sell in direct sales. And they were doing the volume of 10 people. And I said, Jim, I got a bunch of lame people here. I said, I've recruited these guys, but they're, you know, they, they don't do what they say they're going to do. They miss quotas. They don't follow up on people. They're not on the system. It's driving me crazy. And he goes, Shane, he goes, you attract what you are, not what you want. I want he's a mentor and a friend. I wanted to kill him. <laughs> right? And I thought, what do you mean? He goes, look. He says, you know, they're basically doing what you did. And he said, if you want to create a stronger organization, become a better leader. Right? And so our true belief in ourself and our true character is going to attract towards us what we need. Esteem is a belief about yourself and a belief is a sense of certainty and a picture of who you are. That's all it really is. And so how to get better results, in my opinion, create a better picture. 
and work on it on a daily basis. Now, the first time you see that picture, there's me, I'm succeeding, I'm wealthy, I'm balanced, I'm, you know, uh, I'm contributing, and then the little voice goes, no, that's not you, <laughs> right? <laughs> that's not you. There's no way you're capable of that. You know what? Keep going. The little voice does eventually go away, but part of it is repetition and continually doing things that reinforce that for us. Now, I know I'm going to get the hook here in about five minutes, so I'm going to wrap up real quick. So here's some esteem builders. Number one, celebrate success. We don't celebrate success. We celebrate failure and we play down success, right? Great job. And he goes, ah, oh, no problem, right? Most of us will do that. We'll go, oh, that was no problem. But yeah, when we mess up, we'll go, I can't believe I'm so stupid. Can you, did you see what I did there? I'm so sorry, I'm so dumb, I can't believe it. What are we doing? From an esteem perspective, we're celebrating our failures. Make a habit of letting it brush off. Learn from it, but don't hold on to it. And when you succeed, give yourself permission to absolutely celebrate your success. Embarrass yourself a little bit. You get used to it, okay? So, generate powerful questions and have powerful conversations. With who? With ourself, right? Our mind's amazing. If I ask my mind, why is it that I, can't, I don't seem to be able to get my business to the next level? What is my mind going to say? Well, you're undisciplined. For you, it's all about fun. <laughs> you miss deadlines, right? You're inside your comfort zone. And our mind will tell us this. How much does this help us move towards our goals? Zero, right? If I ask my mind, what do I need to do to get my business to the next level? What will my, what will my mind tell me? It'll give me the strategy. So ask and generate powerful questions. Contribute. Whenever I'm feeling lousy about myself, it's usually because I'm thinking about myself. I'm just sort of sitting around, lulling about, poor me. Yet when I get out and I start helping and contributing to other people, all of a sudden it lifts off. And my esteem immediately buoys. Read, which I won't get into too much. I'm sure Peter will talk about this later. Listen. <laughs> Spend time listening. When your mentor talks, don't wait for your turn to talk. Actually listen. And measure progress is on a daily basis the importance of breaking our goals down into small bite-sized amounts is that we're allowed to celebrate along the way and feel like we're getting there. So let me just wrap up with this. Two things, because I know I'm a bit over time. Follow through. I sat down with Dr. Robert Schuler for lunch uh, many years ago. I just had an opportunity to sit down with him. And it was a great surprise. I didn't expect to be there. And I asked him, what's the key to success? And he said, just three things. He said, faith in yourself and your, and your mission, focus, and follow through. And so part of following through, here's my suggestion. Share your goal with someone who has high positive expectations for you and revisit your goals on a regular basis. And lastly, understand the power of failure. And this is, I'm going to finish off with failure and fear here, and I'm going to wrap it up. Failure is actually not the opposite of success. It is part of the process of success. Failure is only feedback. It's a process we talked about as a leader, a goal defines us and refines us. That refining process is through making mistakes and learning from them and moving forward. And so by making risks is where we develop wisdom. I talked to my father the other day and I said to him, Dad, he went through a bit of a challenge in business, a bad decision on a business partner. And I said, Dad, I said, well, you know, it's all about wisdom. I said, you know, and as you get older, he says, I don't feel so wise. I said, don't, don't worry about not feeling wise, Dad. I said, you know, he says, I, he says, I'm in business, I'm your mentor, but here I am, and I've been hoodwinked. And I said, well, I wouldn't worry about it. You know where wisdom comes from, Dad? He goes, well, I don't know. Where? He goes, well, he said, for, I said, from experience. And he says, and he says, and I said, do you know where experience comes from? And he said, no, I said, the wrong decisions, right? And that's where it comes from. And so failure is part of the process. The only failure is if we fail and we fall down and we don't pick something up on our way back up. So, I'm going to wrap it up with this here because I know Peter's waiting to come in here. But here we look at it. Here's commitment. This is one of the things a good friend of mine, I mentioned him earlier, Jim Jantz, had talked to me about. He says, there's real power in 1159.59 on the 30th of the month. Too many people start adjusting their goals halfway down the track. It is not over till 11.59.59 on the 30th of the month. If your goal is to be in a certain place in your life, to reach a certain level of health, 
to attract a certain lifestyle or acquire a financial asset or contribute to society in some way. Too often we get halfway through the month and we're only a third of the way there and what do we do? We lower our standards, right? Well, I'm doing okay, I'll try again next month. Yet I've, I've worked with thousands of salespeople literally around the world, four different continents. And one of the things I've noticed is that how many people will literally produce like 75% of their month's sales volume in the last three days. Now, if they would have worked the whole month that way, it would have been a lot better. <laughs> uh, but the point is, is the power is that it isn't over till it's over. Take a few goals over the next year and commit to them to 1159.59 and see the difference it makes in your ability to perform. So summary here. Focus and awareness help us make better decisions and get better results. Own the destination through visualization. Fully commit to and follow through on your commitments to yourself. Write it down, repeat it, visualize it, own it, and speak it into existence. Thank you very much for having me. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Chains agreed to take a few questions from the floor. So if you have some questions, we'll uh, bring the microphone to you. Karis is running to get us now. Who's got a question for Shane? Back corner there. <laughs> Um, just wanted to ask, what's your regular program with your mentor? Do you have a fixed schedule that you meet, and do you review your goals? What is it you do? You know, uh, I think we kind of, him and I are both kind of flexible people. <laughs> I say him and I, I've got more than one mentor. I've got, you know, probably actively about five right now. Uh, one of the things I found, here's something that's just a piece of advice, is originally with, with uh, Fred, I used to call him and I used to wait till the crisis happened. And then I go, Fred, I'm in the middle of this, please help me. And then after a period of time, he says, Shane, let's set a regular time to get together so you're not always in crisis. <laughs> uh, you know, so let's deal with these challenges you know, before they come up. And so my suggestion, I really do believe that you know, a regular schedule is key, but also a little flexibility. Like I travel a lot, so does he. So you can have a little flexibility in that, but I think a regular schedule will build momentum. And momentum is what you need in any relationship. Good question. Go ahead. Well, see, I don't believe that, you know, I talk about training. People say, Shane, you're a trainer. And I'm saying, no, absolutely not. I'm not actually the trainer. You are. Is that part of it is what you've got is a download of information here. And then what you need to do is go away with it and apply it. And so my, my sort of suggestion would be to follow Darcy's suggestion earlier, is write down three things you're going to do tomorrow. And then pick a buddy here, maybe you don't even know them, and be accountable to getting it done. And part of learning is that today, hopefully, what, I, what you've been inspired to do and will be further inspired to do is to make a commitment to lifelong learning and, and self-development. And so part of that is, you know, literally like for myself, I read every day for 15 minutes. Every week I listen to at least a couple hours of good podcasts on personal development and business. And then you just have to make it a discipline. Yeah? One more quick question. And then we get it. Hi, my name is Bart. Um, I'm, I'm just wondering, how do you motivate yourself? Do you beat yourself up if you fail at something? And what else, do you like buy cake when you <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, actually, well, no, I don't. Uh, it's a good question. I have done that a couple times on both occasions, but... Uh, you know, part of it is, I would say motivating yourself, part of it is a state of mind. Is that, you know, you can think of it as a carrot and a stick, but it's also part of it just stepping into a zone where things click. And I think for me, mo my consistent motivation has to do with a series of vital signs in my life. So I know if I work out a certain number of times a week, and I spend enough time with my family, and I'm out there proactively visiting my clients once a day, at least to one client, I, and I spend time for myself, and I know that I'm giving back every month to society, that if I know I do those things, I'm in the zone. It's easy to move. But when I'm off balance is when I think I feel that often motivation, you know, we can go out and go to motivational seminars and get excited and do all these things, but if we're not living a truly balanced and fulfilled life or well-rounded life, it gets difficult to maintain that motivation. 
So, and it's a process, it's not an event, right? I mean, success is actually, even if you're, you fail, if you're moving towards a goal which was totally within your value set, you haven't failed, because you've enjoyed the whole journey and you've developed. Thank you very much.